Hey, what's up guys? This is Luis Monda and um, I, I'm making this video as a way to address another subject that was brought up on the ShareDog MMA uh, message forum, uh, particularly in the boxing section. What's up guys? Um, so in one particular thread, I don't remember which one off the top of my head, we were discussing the Sons of... And I alluded to the fact that the sons of in boxing have it um, even harder because it's not just about the expectation that they're going to be a great fighter. And the old legend that, you know, no son of a great fighter could ever make a great fighter. And that if a son of was usually great, their, their father was usually mediocre. Uh, if my if either any of my sons turn out to be great, that's probably going to be said about me <laughs> versus them. But being in gyms for a long time and having seen many sons of, I've, I, I'm at the point now where I'm seeing grandsons of. Uh, what I've noticed is that it's it's not merely the fact that they have a a hard time living up to any expectations because of their name, but it's also that they don't even get to be themselves. Uh, it, comparing it is one thing, but it takes a really objective person to be able to look at somebody who's the son of a, of a, of a former fighter who had some notoriety and to be able to just objectively assess the skill of that son. Because I, I argue all the time that uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was a good fighter for what he was. I mean, he was a good fighter. He was, he made it to the world level. Um, he knocked down Sergio Martinez. Uh, he had a really good, you know, the end of that fight was really good for him, despite the fact that the majority of the fight didn't go that great for him. And I wonder what he was treated like all his life, because I see it with my son now. You're constantly told who your dad is, like you don't know. And you know, like some some of them might not know or they might not understand the the the, the grandeur of it, but it doesn't and shouldn't really mean anything to them. They're, they're them, and they should be treated like any other fighter in the gym. You know, like, you got to put in your time, you got to pay your dues, you got you to gotta put in the same work as everyone else. You know, you should do however long in the amateurs it takes to develop, uh, get to the world level. If, if they follow the same format that most people follow to get where they are, because it's not always about, oh, you... You were spoiled as a kid and I had it hard or it's not always about that. There's a lot of kids in, in boxing who had a dad that paid for everything and took them to all the tournaments and, you know, uh, flew them all around the country. And they they were able to do good because of that. You know, uh, the, the sons of have pretty much that exact same opportunity, you know, or, or they come from countries where the fighting is subsidized, you know, like where you. You, you essentially, the government pays for everything. Uh, so everyone kind of has the same opportunities. But when you're a son of, you you also have have it put on you that you're 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 kind of not even your own person. You know, like nobody is judging you based on just what you can do. Every last little thing. You know, it's it's not like I said, it's not just about a general comparison. Oh, compared to your dad, you're not that good. But how good are they? Do they get to even be a little bit good? Do they get to be do they get any credit even at all? It it usually goes right to no, you're just a name. And and yes, there are promoters and managers who want to make money off that name. So even even the industry treats them like they're a son of. It, it's not just who is this person and what are they capable of? You know, they, they don't have that individuality about them. They're always coupled with someone else. And that makes things incredibly 
uh, difficult, biased, you know, say what you want. But so what I've tried to do to combat this when I see these kids in the gym coming up is to just give them honest feedback. You know, like don't you don't need to mention who their dad is if this particular sec technique is is not up to par that's what they need to be talked to about you know like uh when i first moved to las vegas i met chad gannigan uh the son of andy gannigan and we were really cool in the gym uh did a lot of sparring and you know like I, when i heard his last name because um Richie Sandoval, who was my coach at the time, call, and his coach too, called him. It was like, hey, Gannigan. And I was like, Gannigan. Because I had seen the fight between his dad and Alexis Arguello. And I'm, and I'm like, are you related to Andy Gannigan? And he was like, yeah, that was my dad. Chad Gannigan was like a decent fighter. But because of the way the industry treated him, you, you, you don't know anything about him. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people probably never even realized that Andy, Andy Gannigan had a son that turned pro. Uh, but I saw it from day one, from that point, they, they, and he told me, he's like, I get offered fights all the time just because of my name. And like, I know I'm not ready for like that level of competition yet. Uh, so that's sons of really, that's what they really face. And it, it's starting also to happen to sons of coaches, but the way that we combat this is to be honest about them their individual skill you know like it doesn't matter like if you're going to compare them to anyone compare them to their contemporaries you know be like compared to this guy who's currently competing you know like or learn from this person or you know observe that person that they they also what i'm getting at is that they also have a bubble around them within the sport even in the gyms you know it's like you can already see that there are there are people around them who are kind of insulating them from just being their own selves. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's the thing is that their their whole entire identity will get lost, and that that's one of the reasons why I kind of like. You'll notice that my tone when I when I make comments about sons of, like I'm a, I'm a little easier on them than the average person because, again, you know, like I just want to assess like. I've I've known Chris Eubank Jr. since he was 16. How good is he? He's good. He's a good fighter. You know, like, has he had a couple tough losses? Yes, but he's had tough losses against tough opposition. You know, like, are they good? A lot of sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. And all I'm saying is, let's just be honest about that. All right, guys. Thank you.